Hey, everybody. Welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a bonus episode from Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. And this week's movie is A Winter Getaway, which is movie number four out of five from the New Year New Movies Should Be Called Winterfest series on the Hallmark (laughs) Channel in January. (laughs) And if you're new here, Wendy and I like to review these movies. I am a longtime Hallmark fan. Wendy is a brand new Hallmark Baby watched her first Hallmark movie way back in October of 2020. So I'm off the rails, dude. (laughs) I'm off the rails now. I have added Hallmark Mystery Movies or whatever it's called to my cable lineup. I am recording movies that I don't have to watch for the podcast. My my husband will come downstairs and he's like, what are you watching? And then he'll roll his eyes because it's a Hallmark movie. I don't know what's happening. We have breaking news right now in the Hallmark movie world, and that is that as you were talking, I opened my Hallmark checklist app, which is great if you want to keep track of the new movies as well as when old movies are airing. And as it opened, it asked me if I wanted to add the Love Ever After lineup to my calendar that was not available yesterday. It is available today, which is Monday, January 21st, as we are recording that. So if you want to keep track of the new movies, I would recommend that app and the Love Ever After series is live in the app. Exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I have the app too. Oh, my gosh. She is off the rails. Okay. A winter's getaway. Would you like me to recap it for the fine folks at home? I would. Okay. When an average guy is gifted a luxury trip, he is mistaken as a millionaire. But then sparks fly with the lovely concierge. Will she feel the same way about him when she learns the truth? News and notes about a winter getaway. I didn't find many. Do you have some? I have a couple. So we like to talk about where these were filmed. This was filmed in several locations in Canada, but largely in Banff, um, which is in the Canadian Rockies. And I know Mm -hmm. you're going to have something to say about that. Well, I was supposed to go on a sister trip with my sister to Banff last summer. Obviously, Mm -hmm. we didn't go because of COVID. So watching this movie just made my heart sad because I am dying to go there. My husband has been there, loved it there. Um, so yeah, this just made me dream of traveling again. And as soon as they announced where they were going, I, I did think of you. I know. Um, Nazneen Contractor, who is the uh, lead actress in the movie, commented on Twitter that in the scene where they are filming the outdoor lunch... She said it was so cold that the grapefruit juice and her wine glass kept freezing. Oh, no way. It did oh my look gosh. cold. I did not envy them sitting out there in the freezing. Well, having lunch. Yeah, they did film it during November and December of 2020. So real you snow. see their breath. I mean, it was <laughs> snowy. I did also see, we talked about um, last week, our actor did his own skiing. This week... She showed a shot of her ski double on Instagram. It was in a collage of photos. She didn't specifically call her out, but there was a side-by-side photo of them dressed identically. And uh, Yes. So I don't know if uh, Brooks Darnell had a ski double as well, but she definitely did. Got it. Um, I saw that two things. This movie was going to be named something else. Yes, Love in the Alps. Love in the Alps and Love in the Rockies. They decided on a winter getaway. <laughs> I mean, obviously, Love in the Alps, since they changed the locale, didn't work. Love in the Rockies, eh. A winter getaway. Yeah. I think it fits what's happening. Right, right. Um, so I have read a little bit of criticism about this movie. Are you oh, interested in hearing it? I am. They said that, and when I say they... A couple of commenters on the IMDb website (laughs) said that um, the music was the sound level of the music was too loud in some of the scenes that you couldn't hear the um, actors speaking. Did you did you notice any of that? No. Did you? I noticed that the soundtrack I thought was great. I thought it was like current and uh, made it feel like I was watching a a real movie, Um, but I didn't notice it the sound level being like too high. 
one of the reviews in the Hallmark app. The premise was interesting and the actors appealing, but we couldn't hear key dialogue. This See? seems to be a growing problem. <laughs> I just, people got to complain about something, dude. What is your first impression of this movie? I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I was so bored. Okay, that's what my husband said. He's like, what? This is the most boring movie. Nothing is happening. There's no, like, forward movement in it. Well, what's funny, and we'll go to what we liked next, but what's weird for me is that there were so many individual aspects of the movie that I liked, but it didn't add up to being a great movie to uh, me. Okay. But super fair. Let's talk about those things. Okay, so the first thing I liked, I loved the actors. I loved both the lead actors in this movie. Um, I thought they were charming and believable and good actors. Um, I enjoyed them on screen. They were not sometimes these actors are uncomfortable to watch, but I felt like they played their roles well. Well, I really liked them both. I think I liked Brooke Starnell maybe a little bit better, only because he seemed very natural to me with like the script and mm -hmm. um but i liked them together and i thought they had chemistry from go so yeah. um i did enjoy them too and i would absolutely watch another movie that they star in i also loved the many montages that we got throwing it back to one of your wishes from the last movie was a little bit of an action sequence. We got a skiing montage, a dog sledding montage, and a curling montage. Yep. I found those highly enjoyable to watch. Me too. Um, I thought those were really good too. And it made me go, man, I want a dog sled. That would be so much fun. And then when they curled, I was like, curling again? Because if you remember, <laughs> curling was also featured in a New Year's resolution my husband just goes, Canada. <laughs> That's all he said to me when I complained about curling. Well, someone on Twitter was responding to the Hallmark channel, and they're like, this is the first time I've ever seen curling in a Hallmark movie. And I had to, well, actually them and be like, it was in a New Year's resolution also. <laughs> they did not respond. They apparently did not appreciate my insight. But <laughs> I asked my husband, I, go, I was like, is curling the thing here in the States? I don't there's got to be some like Midwest locally there is states, a curling right? league here in California. Uh huh. Uh huh. No way. My, my oh friend my gosh. did like a intro lesson. Okay, so I think post pandemic when we can do this, I think we should go curling because okay. I think that would be so funny. Yeah, there's an Orange County Curling Club, all no curling way. suspended. <laughs> oh, oh god, <laughs> that is funny. Okay, so. Like I said, I really like the soundtrack in this movie. The scenery was so beautiful to look at. Agreed. Um, just so many beautiful shots. Um, I especially liked when they were out shopping and they were walking down that little main street. It was just so cute. And I want to go there so badly. I'm glad that they were actually filming in Banff you know, filming where they're supposed to be. And it was so funny because I was wondering, um, you know, the Fairmont Springs is like the big hotel out there. And you know how they, in the movie, there was like a hotel that was under renovations or whatever. Yeah. They was that the hotel they the were Fairmont. referring? They filmed they did? the Fairmont. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So I wonder if the Fairmont allowed that because they just don't have any tourism there right now and another one of the notes i saw said another one of the movies was also filmed at a different fairmont property man i want to go there so badly that's what i liked about it i agree with you that it was a little bit slow uh all the kind of like action happened of course at the very very end and we'll get to that because i have some like criticism about that okay but let's move on to uh oh. Uh oh. Um, do you have any? I do. A very short list. You know, they throw it in very early on. And as a reminder, no relationships with the clients. And of course, she shows up and he's beautiful and she falls for him. And uh oh, she's not allowed to date him. And he tries to kiss her. Yeah, that was that scene was super awkward when she like turned away from him and he was like, I'm so sorry. And I, I was well, like, what I didn't Awkward. understand, because she made him feel, he was like, oh, I got caught up in the moment. And she was like, yeah. Why wouldn't she just say, 
I was feeling it too, but it's not like, you know, it's not allowed. My job is on the line. Yeah. Just communicate with the guy like, hey, I'm feeling you too. But right now, like I can't, this, my job's important to me and I can't mess things up. So yeah. hands off or whatever. <laughs> you know? um, uh-oh, for me, I have one note. Joe is a liar. I wrote, he's a liar? <laughs> question mark. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole problem. Like, there, uh, I get so frustrated with these movies sometimes. While I like them, these are easy fixes, and these people make their life too complicated. Also, I didn't care about his lie. I could not muster up the energy to be angry with him. No part of me was like, eh, I mean, okay, so he's not a billionaire, but... I don't know. There was no part of me that cared at all about his lie. And I really was like, why do you care? Why do you care? You don't actually care that he's not a billionaire. If you had met him, you still would have liked him. Nothing that you like about him is because he maybe is a billionaire. So why do you care? I didn't. She cares because she wants a relationship like her mother and father and their relationship is based off of trust and honesty. And so if Joe can't be honest, honest with her that he's not a billionaire, then that blows the relationship out of the water for her. Fair enough. Uh, we had a lot of like funny jokes at home. Basically, the guy works for Geek Squad. <laughs> like, yes. He's he's the mobile guy that comes out. Totally. And, fix. and then I was like, why doesn't his billionaire best friend give him a better job? Like, that is so ridiculous. Like, if he's that good, like, okay, there's a difference between being techie who can fix a computer and then writing code who can build an app. So yes. why doesn't why doesn't his friend give him a better job? Like, it's just stupid to me. Stupid. Well, should we jump into what we wished for? Sure. Uh, my first wish for is for real jobs. I, uh, okay. First of all, what's her name? Courtney. Courtney. I hated her job. Look, Why? Because while I believe that these high-end concierge businesses exist, they're not traveling with you. They're not showing up. They will make all of the arrangements so that the person at the hotel will walk you to your driver who is waiting to take you to your helicopter skiing. Yeah. They're not showing up and walking you to breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, no. That yeah. felt fake to me. Also, her app idea <laughs> is so stupid. It is 2021. First of all, she's like wants to create a combination between like a YouTube channel and TripAdvisor. Yeah. And what was weird to me is he's like, you'll create this app. And they'll be like, I want to go to the Swiss Alps. That's not what he said. But and like a video will pop up and you're telling them all about it, except she hasn't created any of this content. So you want her to launch an app that is the ultimate travel guide when she has not created, she has to start traveling to create how in the world, how many yeah. years is it going to take her to be the ultimate travel guide app? Who's going to want to invest in that? Uh, his billionaire friend, apparently. is just going to give them money to travel the world and make videos? No. That's what it made it sound like at the end. Lady, make a YouTube channel <laughs> in your spare time. <laughs> I mean, I'm also following your dreams. I also think I am such a dream killer. My husband had talked about this business idea, and I consider myself a realist. You can call it whatever you want. And I was not knocking the idea at all just pointing out like the things that you might need to think about i can be a bit of a dream killer well it was a dumb idea for an app you're right about that that's what for sure wish for um i wish for a little more clarity on who joe really was as the viewer of this movie you need to be let in on like the secret or the I think it's better as the viewer that you know what's going on, even though, like, the main character doesn't know what's going on. Because otherwise, then you're confused as well as what's going on. So I was – you sent me a text yesterday, yes. and you're like, I think I missed a big part of <laughs> Yeah, I said I think I missed movie. a major plot point, but it turns out I hadn't. They just hadn't told us. Yeah. It, yeah, they need to tell the viewer. Anyhow, with Joe – 
going on the vacation for his friend and like the mix up at work. It's not that big of a deal. Like the whole scene where like when they're back at the agency and the lady's like, oh, somebody else is paying for it. Then who's Joe? (laughs) Whatever. Like Google exists. Why aren't they Googling Joe? Whatever his name was, Franklin, because they thought he was the head of geek squad i know it they wasn't had, called that like, but a dossier on him with all of the information that's what i didn't understand the person who had originally had this account gave her this file with information about him had she just created the file about the billionaire and then changed the name when it turns out the billionaire wasn't going to take the trip that's i what guess didn't make sense. she had this file that had all this information you know joe wasn't like didn't give her that information i don't I agree that it would have been better if we had been let in from the start and all of the little like she almost finds out moments or the moments where it's very clear that he's like new to money would have been funnier as the viewer as opposed to us going, what's wrong with this dude? Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. They also cut out a scene that was in a promo that I saw on Instagram oh. where when they offer him um, a mimosa and he asks for a root beer in the promo, he says, oh, is it free? <laughs> oh. But they cut that out. Oh. Um, and, you know, he's, like, riding the airplane chair like it's a roller coaster. I mean, yeah. come on. Dude's been that was... in a chair that moves before. He's been in a car. <laughs> <laughs> I like that part. <laughs> the movie theater has reclining chairs. It's not like his first day on the planet. Oh, you're funny. Okay, so I wish they had mo- more snowboarding. He It was supposed to be a snowboarding trip, right? Uh-huh. And you would think that he's in this, like, spectacular place for boarding. Wouldn't he do it every single day? He's not going to be like, oh, I'm too... S-. I mean, I don't snowboard, so I don't know, like, how taxing it is on your body. But for someone who was, like, going on a three-day trip or four-day trip to snowboard, I would think that they would go more than one day. So I have been snowboarding and it was the most sore I've ever been. But this is a man <laughs> who, who grew up his, snowboarding. Who has his own snowboard, who like cares very much about his snowboard. He's not new to it. He's clearly in good shape. So like he's not me. I don't know. I it was obvious <laughs> like, oh, we only have the body doubles for a day, so we only get one snowboarding shot. And I also had issues with the snowboarding itself, the like Ski lift? What ski lift? We're going to helicopter in. This is so stupid. Yes, helicopter skiing is a thing, but it's typically to like remote locations where you can't ski lift. It's not like we're going to helicopter you to the top of the mountain because rich people don't ride a ski lift. False. No, no. And they're like the on on these perfectly groomed runs. No, that's no. That was ridiculous. She's like waving the helicopter down to land. So (laughs) pick them up? No, it's so stupid. Right. Okay. 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 I just wished for deeper relationships with some of the side characters. In some of these movies, we've had great friendships that really drive part of the movie. And other than maybe the bellhop at the hotel. Gabe. We didn't ha- yes, thank you. We didn't have that. You know, her boss back at home. I just wanted some other side character that I cared about. I know, but they're on vacation somewhere. There's, you know, there's no friends with them. They so they could have made it happen. Okay. All right. Fine. It's time How? for everyone's mm-hmm. favorite part of the podcast. Did you see that? I have a couple. Me too. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, when they were in the airplane, mm-hmm. in the private jet, and she was having problems with her computer, he said, oh, you have to clear the cache. It's not called the cache. It's called the cache. <laughs> Techie computer guy knows that, right? I was so annoyed. Where is the script person who like follows every word of the script when they're making when they're making this movie? In another room because it's COVID. <laughs> Behind like, her mask. It's, it's too far to run in there to correct him. Just keep rolling. She's like, it's cash, not cache. <laughs> yeah. So that was annoying but i did think there were some funny lines in there and i will be sharing those on our girls gone hallmark instagram but um what did you see did you happen to zoom in on the rental price when she rents her ski clothes i was very (laughs) curious to see 
Like, if they had made a real invoice on that screen, and they had, it was like $142. But I was like, oh, that's it? The screen. Yeah. Just for a day's rental, that actually, I mean, it's not going to keep it. Well, I thought Mr. Millionaire was buying it for her. Oh, he asked for, like, the best rentals in town. So. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And here's the other thing. Like, so they went shopping. Homeboy doesn't have any money. And, like, they're, like, acting like they're just going to, like... Oh, we're going down and shopping in Beverly Hills, buying anything that we want. Like, that didn't make any sense to me. He wants to go shopping, but he doesn't have any money. But he ended up at the art gallery when they were shopping, and then they went to the souvenir shop. Yeah. Oh, again, the souvenir. She's like, look at this beautiful snow globe. It was like the cheesiest, Mm -hmm. crappiest Banff snow globe that you're going to get at some little touristy shop like it uh dumb 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 okay <sighs> did you watch the scene where there's two of them where he's drinking beer yeah i don't think he ever takes a sip oh i his his sipping was terrible i did realize that i don't think he takes a sip i think he like there's the scene where they have the flight of beer, and then there's the scene where he's with Gabe, and his beer is half finished, and Gabe doesn't touch his. And he keeps, like, drinking his beer, but none of it ever goes in his mouth. Oh, funny. And I was like, if you can't drink it because you're redoing the scene over and over again, give him something he can drink, please. <laughs> because yeah. Because it was, like, it, it, was made, it was bad. Well, in that flight, when they had the flight of beers, too, like, my husband's like, that's not how you do it. <laughs> Like, you don't you don't sip one from over here and then sip one from over here and then try this one here. Like you're supposed to drink them in order, like, like lightest to darkest, right? Yeah. Yes. I thought that was weird. He's like, work toward the middle. I, like, I know. Mm. That's not how that works. <laughs> in the hot chocolate scene, while we're talking about drinks, there's a moment where Courtney's drink goes from completely full and in the next shot it's half gone. Oh, she downed it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His doesn't change. He doesn't touch his, but uh, there was there was a continuity issue there. Okay, how about when they're eating lunch? What is squab? I think it's some sort of fowl. Ugh. I think it's a bird. So they have this whole conversation about like what he does want to eat, and he's talking about chili dogs and macaroni and cheese and I don't I can't remember what else he said. And she's like, "Great, meet me. I'll work on it. Meet me downstairs at one o'clock." And then they don't eat. They go out shopping. So I'm like, what happened to the chili dog scene? Like, I was looking forward to that. And why is he so... First of all, why is she ordering for him? That's the weirdest thing. So dumb. Rich people can order their own food. They can make choices. And why is he afraid to say when she's ordering, like, these breakfast it is? And, like, like, you can order your own French toast. I don't... It was... No, I'm sorry. They... It's like they've never met a rich person before. And I don't know... Unless, like, you have a personal assistant who knows, like, what your typical breakfast order is, you're not going to have a stranger ordering food for you simply because it's fancy. Right. It's perfectly fine to like a burger. Like, right. (laughs) Dude, order a burger for lunch. Right. And, well, that was so frustrating. Like, if you don't like the squab, do you just be like, hey, can I get a burger instead? Like, this is not what I want to eat for lunch. But instead he chokes it down. Like, that's so dumb. Come on. All right, how many stars are you going to give this winter getaway? (sighs) Okay, seriously, again, same as last week. When it ended, I was like, this is the best Hallmark movie I've ever seen. (laughs) It's so good. And my husband's like, it was so boring. So then we discuss what I would rate it. And he's like, how can you even give it that? I'm going to give this movie... God, Megan, I want to give it like three stars. (laughs) So generous. It was so beautiful to look at. And I, the the actors were beautiful. I just, I l- liked a lot of elements of it. But like you said earlier, like it just didn't all work together. So I think a three is super generous. It was still better than a New Year's resolution. False. Wrong. No. <laughs> a New Year's resolution came together for me. This movie, I agree. I liked many of the elements on their own. And if I were grading them individually and adding them up, I probably would get to a much higher score. But overall, based on my experience watching it, it's a two star for me. And I feel so badly doing that because there were a lot of great things. I would love to see both of them in another movie. But this 
you know, sometimes you can only do so much with the material you're given. And I think they were maybe given a stinker. Well, I disagree. I thought the writing was pretty good, but maybe whoever like came up with the overall story of it was not good. I thought their lines were good. No? Yeah, that's true. I didn't, I found the conversation fine. I don't, I can't put my finger on what fell flat for me because there were so many enjoyable moments, but I didn't care. I don't, I didn't feel, I feel very badly about that. Well, I had really high hopes going into it because I was like, look at, they have this diverse main cast. Yes. I was excited about that. I had heard an interview um, of Brooks Darnell. I liked him. Um, so I had like really high hopes and yeah, I know a three is too generous. Maybe. I think you stick with your gut. Go with your gut. Okay. I mean, I liked it. Do I think I'd watch it again? No, but I don't know. I liked, I liked Brooks. I liked Brooks Darnell quite a bit. (laughs) Well, he, they both have pretty deep resumes, but. Not a ton of Hallmark movies on them, which I like. I like to see someone who's not entrenched in the Hallmark community yeah. kind of shake things up. That can dip in between, like, Hallmark and regular TV. Yes. <laughs> Real TV. You know what I mean. I, I feel the same way. Okay, right. so I will tell you I'm not looking forward to next week's movie. Oh, no. Why not? It, it looks boring. I hope maybe the low expectation will will, uh, will make it a good one. I really like her. Jen Lilly is the actress in that movie, and I like her a lot, so I'm hoping that she brings it home for me. Next week's movie is Snow Kissed, featuring Jen Lilly and Chris McNally, and we will see if it exceeds Wendy's expectations. Good to go in low. Hard to... <laughs> hard to go below your expectations. <laughs> um, we have our regular podcast episodes that come out every Tuesday. We'd love for you to check those out. And as always, we appreciate the ratings and reviews you leave for our show. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.